Welcome to the closing ceremony of the Master of Science in Public Policy and Human Development cohort 2020-2021. My name is Julieta Marota and I am the Academic Program Director and together with Professor Francisca Gassman, who undertook the role of Program Director while I was on maternity leave, we will perform as Masters of Ceremony. I would like to start by thanking the organizers of this ceremony, Abby, Dennis, and Rasma and Herman here, because setting up the club, the logistics of this ceremony has been quite an adventure. We have people all over the places following the ceremony. Some of the students are at the Pate Theater, others at Lumiere, other students are at their places in Maastricht, others in their countries of residence, some instructors and staff are here at Renew Mary, others in their houses, loved ones following the ceremony all over the places. I would love to have a camera at this moment showing what you are all setting up or standing following the ceremony. It's really good having this opportunity. And this also reinforces the motto of this academic year, which was in distance or in person, education unites us. Therefore, I want to dedicate this ceremony to education, for giving us a chance to be together, to engage and to get to know each other. We will start the ceremony with a word of welcome by our director of UNU Merit and Dean of the Maastricht Graduate School of Governance, Professor Bartel van de Waal. Thank you very much, Julieta. Can everybody hear me? I hope that works well. Great, thank you. So, um, wow, what an uh, achievement. It's the end of the year and you made it. Um, it has been a year like no other. Um, I don't need to convince you of that. You experienced it all yourselves. It has been a year full of challenges, um, things we have never imagined we had to do. Uh, from our side, we never had imagined that we had to teach the way we did. We never ha would have imagined that we would have you at a distance or in Maastricht, but unable to see and meet and talk and educate and, and learn from you. So that was all unprecedented challenges. From your side, the same challenges applied as well. You, you had to miss much of the interaction that we normally would have done. You had to miss the interaction among yourselves to some degree. Um, a year that I'm sure when um, you know, you're a bit older, you know, saying getting into my age group, you may tell your children or, you know, no, that's maybe too young, but in another few years, you may tell your grandchildren about this special year. Um, this will be a year that you will never forget. And it's a year that we had wanted to give you in a different way, but we did what we could. And I want to congratulate all the staff that was involved in teaching for their flexibility, their adaptation to the circumstances, and, and to the many, many people who made it possible uh, behind the scenes, the student advisors, all the people that you talk to throughout the year, and we're here to try to help. So we did, given the circumstances, I think the best we could do. And it was not ideal, but we made it, and you are here today at this closing ceremony. We tried to help where we could. We had uh, initiated these internships that some of you did. I hope that was a little bit helpful at least. But maybe most importantly, what we wanted to show through the internships and through all the commitment from everybody who was in this program from our side is that we really care about you. We want you to learn, to study, to come here and, and you know, grow as a person um, through your studies, through the interaction with us and among each other. We care for you that you had that in a safe environment. It was not easy to keep our building closed, knowing that all of you were there waiting for your classes. But it was also our responsibility to do that because we wanted you to get through this as well as you could. So it had some yeah, annoying effects. It was annoying that you couldn't have your Christmas party or other meetings in the building, that you couldn't easily go for drinks. I'm sorry, we couldn't uh, help that, but we hope at least that you could feel that we were really, really concerned and trying to help throughout this year. So enough about the bad year. Um, now the future awaits you after today. Um, you will have your plans. They can be adventurous. They can be just a sigh of relief that you can finally go to your family and take a break. Or maybe you want a break away from your family. That's also an option. 
but whatever the future will bring you, I'm sure it will be exciting. You have been trained here, you have learned a new program, new skills, new knowledge, and I'm sure you will bring that with you, take that with you for the rest of your lives. So whatever career break or next step you choose, I hope that you take with you what you have experienced here in the positive way in this program. So I want to wish you all the best. It was an honor and a pleasure to have you here at Union Merit in this master's program. I wish you really all the best. And if you have a chance, come by and visit us again, because maybe then one day we can have that drink somewhere on a terrace in beautiful Maastricht. So thank you very much. I wish you good luck. And I'm handing over back to, uh, I believe, Francisca, who will take it from here. Thank you. Hello, dear students. Hi to our class 2020-21. Listening to our director, Bartel van der Wolle, I have the feeling that some of you, or some of us, we will tell you more or less the same things, maybe in slightly different words. But let me tell you, it is truly a privilege and a pleasure to address you all during this closing ceremony. You know, indeed, an unusual academic year is coming to an end right now. Ten months ago, you came to Maastricht full of hopes and expectations. The world was at that time relatively okay, although the signs on the horizons were already indicating that things might turn out really differently. And indeed, what a year it was. From the start and contrary to our expectations, we had to rely on online teaching. We were hoping all the time that at some point the worst would be over and we could welcome you in the classroom again. Yet a bad situation turned into worse when the Netherlands went into lockdown again. That made life for many of you even more difficult, not only financially, but also emotionally. But also, let's look at the positive things this year has brought. In September, we welcomed our new director, Bartel van der Wolle, who acted quickly and unbureaucratically when the need was greatest. In December, Julieta gave birth to a beautiful baby girl named Victoria. And a few weeks ago, at least, we could see each other, at least some of us, we could see each other in person. And also today, you know, I am really lucky to be here at the Institute with a few people together. And I just feel the excitement to be so happy to see each other and sometimes think, huh, who are you? <laughs> and then, you know, the mouth cap goes away. It says, oh, yes, I recognize you from the screen. <laughs> you know, I know, I, and we all know that this was a very tough year for you. But I believe that this year and the situation made you actually stronger. I strongly believe that this year taught you skills that matter for life. In order to successfully navigate the last 10 months, you had to be flexible, versatile. You could only succeed with determination, stamina, flexibility, and autonomy. You will always be a very special class for us, a once in a lifetime class, so to speak. The exceptional circumstances under which you finish the MPP creates a special bond among you, but also between us. And it is something to cherish. Now you will hear from the students. Ashley, our demos president, Lisa, our student ambassador, on the student experience from your perspective. Hi, I'm Lisa, the student ambassador of the MPP. At this moment, I want to extend a very special welcome to all the loved ones who are joining us online. We may be the ones celebrating today, but we recognize today is as much as a victory for you as it is for us. Thank you for all the support. Wow, what a year. Last week, we were sitting at St. Peter's and watching the sunset, and Lou said, watch, the sun is setting like the MPP. And of course, we were all quite sentimental. However, I think it has something beautiful. Sunsets are beautiful, and so are we. But let me start with the sunrise. 
our very first day. You remember all the readings we already had to prepare for the next day, feeling a little bit overwhelmed? Well, what followed were endless tutorials, watching lectures in bed while having breakfast, breakdowns with data, and not to forget the countless thesis working Fridays. From the very first day, I was impressed how all helped each other. And what can I say? It's amazing how you accomplish things when you take it word by word. It has been tough. We all had our moments, but we definitely can celebrate what we have achieved. This whole COVID situation didn't make this year easier, but we were still able to get together. And with this, I want to highlight demos. You girls did such an incredible job, and we can't thank you enough for all the time, effort, creativity, and love you put in. Another special place in our hearts have all the activities and moments we shared together, such as the hangouts in the park and all the great conversations, which almost every single time ended with how we want to make this world a better place. Now we're seeing the sun setting. After a long but also fast and bright year, at least when it didn't rain in Mali, we are now more or less ready to spread out to new adventures. I guess most of us have mixed feelings, but remember that we keep those memories and from now on we all have friends all around the world who we can't wait to visit. Thank you guys for making this year so amazing and special. With this, I hand over to Ashley. Remember last September, each of us nestled in our bedrooms, spread across the world, with just a cup of coffee to keep us as a companion, trying to get it through a day of Zoom fatigue and trying our best to get to know our new classmates, but the restrictions making this easier said than done. During this time, we, as a Denmark's board, faced the daunting task of trying to build community for this online cohort, but to be honest, we didn't really know where to start. So, standing here today, I'm proud of what we've accomplished. Today, we celebrate the journey and the fact that we've made it through this year. Yes, in some ways it's been disappointing and it's hard to realize we won't always get the MPP conventional experience. But nevertheless, we've become masters of adapting to the restrictions given and making the most of every opportunity. So in this moment, I want to honor some of the people who made this year, not something to just get through, but something to relish. When I joined Demos, I didn't expect it to evolve into a team with two of my closest friends. So in this moment, I want to celebrate Luce and Lucia. When I arrived, I didn't expect, I, I'm grateful for these ladies who arrive every day ready to better the MPP experience, being so motivated by love and a desire to serve those around you. Luce and Lucia, on behalf of everyone in the cohort, I'd like to say thank you to you today. But of course we didn't do it alone. And because of this, Luce, Lucia and I would like to thank everyone who participated in the NEVOS committees. This became a web of connections far surpassing our expectations. With your help, we became designers of yearbooks and hoodies, activities directors, which would put even the best crew ship director to shame, quiz masters, podcasters, extraordinaires, and we even got a mini masters in marketing as we became the kings of event promo. This year will forever be defined in our memory by your work. Thank you for your boundless creativity, willingness to participate, and infectious enthusiasm. Another thank you that I'd like to extend on behalf of the students is to Julieta Francisca Bo and if all the other support staff. This year was hard on us and we're sure it was hard on you too. So thank you for your commitment to us as a cohort and your endless compassion. The final thank you that Luce, Lucia and I would like to extend is to the cohort itself. Through the tribulations and jubilations of trying to unite everyone online, we're proud of the community that's emerged. Serving at you has been a joy, but getting to know you has been the highlight. So truly thank you for throwing yourselves into this year and congratulations for making it through. This year has been tough, but we can say without a shadow of a doubt that it's been worthwhile. We have seen a cohort emerge with such a sense of dedication, which we would never have expected. The only thing left to say is that we hope you're proud of yourselves because we are proud of you. You've shown strength and stamina. With this, we wish you every success and happiness going forward. After the perseverance, and ability to get over Zoom fatigue that we've seen this year, we have no doubt that you're ready to conquer the world and we can't wait to see it. So with this, I introduce our next speaker, Meta Smith. Meta was part of the 2011-2012 cohort. 
Since then, she's spoken to focus her work on sustainable human development and gender in Africa, Southern Asia, Latin America, and the Caribbean. She now works as a program coordinator for the Global Alliance for Green and Gender Action Program. Today, she will give us insight into her experience, her work, and maybe for some of us, some ideas about what to do next. So with this, I welcome Meta. Hi, everyone. Can you, just checking that you can hear me? I don't know. <laughs> Great. Um, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to students, faculty, family, and close ones. My name is Maita Smet, um, and I'm an MPP alumni from 2011-2012. I'm very honored to be here with you today and celebrate with you this great achievement. First and foremost, I want to start off by acknowledging each and every one of you for graduating in these unprecedented times and getting through a very challenging year. I also want to extend my solidarity to those of you who have gone through or have had close ones go through difficult, difficult moments due to the direct or indirect impacts of COVID-19. I personally cannot believe it is almost 10 years since I graduated from this program. It only seems like yesterday that I was sitting where you are today, really nervous because I was soon departing to start off an internship in Washington, DC. Although I was very sad to leave the amazing group of friends I had made in my very intense year at Maastricht, I was very excited for what lay ahead. For me, completing the MPP course meant a big step towards the career and life I had envisioned for myself. I felt like there was a myriad of opportunities waiting for me and that it was all really just beginning. And it really was just beginning. In these past nine to 10 years, I've been able to work, engage with, and influence public policy from different perspectives and angles. I have worked with the Organization of American States, a regional intergovernmental organization focusing on the Americas and the Caribbean on primary and secondary education policies, a consultancy company working in tandem with UK Aid to, de to deliver on their commitment to poverty reduction, and since 2016, with a network of civil society organizations largely based in the global south supporting local movements leading transformative action on the nexus of gender and climate justice. My work has taken me across the globe to some amazing places, but most importantly, I've had the privilege to meet wonderful people. It is in my current position as the coordinator of the Global Alliance for Green and Gender Action, or GAGA, <laughs> um, in which I've gained the most, not only professionally, but also personally. When I got this job, there was an element of timing as the opportunity came in a moment when I least expected it. Although it was a long shot of an application, I was definitely short of a couple years of experience, I still applied because I felt that I not only had the skills and knowledge for the position, but the profile itself was very much aligned with what I was looking for myself. Three months later, I was on a plane going to Central America. And six years on, I clearly haven't regretted my decision as I'm still working with Gaga. I'm responsible for a program of 34 million euros, which has now been renewed for another five years. And it provides direct flexible support to close to 500, 500 mostly women-led civil society organizations across Africa, Asia, and Latin America. As a feminist demanding social and environmental justice, it means I'm working on issues that are dear and important to me. And I get to work with resilient and inspiring organizations across the globe, who in many cases are working in difficult contexts of closing civic space and political unrest, however, are still making significant contributions to key policies and practices at local, national, and international levels. Please don't get me wrong. It hasn't been straightforward and easy, and I've had to make many personal sacrifices. There have also been many moments of doubts around my career decisions. And trust me, this will happen to you too. Making mistakes, questioning and challenging yourself is part of growing and learning about what is truly important to you. It took me a while to understand what I am strongest in and, and the contributions I can make. I will be honest, I'm still working on my discomfort about what I represent in a field that in many ways continues to contribute to the same systems of oppression that it claims to address and respond to. So talking about patriarchy, racism, colonialism, and capitalism. I'm still learning and unlearning around these issues, understanding my privileges as a white cis woman and demanding better practices and actions from myself and within my field of work. 
That being said, I recognize that through this questioning and the challenges I put myself in, I have built the experience, skills and network I need to work with organizations and in programs that align with my principles and values. These are obviously reflections from my own experience and everyone in this room will have their own. However, when these questions arise, don't shy away from them. I invite you to give them space identify where they are coming from, and most importantly, try to understand why. Listen to yourself, trust your intuition, find ways to construct meaning from these inner dialogues, and be open to actively work on your identity and who you want to be. You might just be starting your professional journey or picking it up soon again. I don't know, some people come in um, in between careers. Throughout, there will be many ups and downs, moments of huge achievements and big frustrations, lots of tears, as well as lots of laughter. It will not be perfect. Some luck, good networking and timing is needed on the way, but know that every experience is a step in the right direction. Most importantly, throughout this journey, don't forget your community, the people who have been there since day one and those that you will meet along the way. I cherish my community of family, friends, and close ones who are spread out across the globe. I appreciate those moments I have with them, however short they may be, whether it is a quick note, voice note on WhatsApp, a three hour catch up Zoom call, or a weekend get together in a city where we are crossing paths. Your community is part of your identity. It is a support network unlike any other, and as important, or maybe more important than the career you're trying to forge for yourself. Make time for your community and be kind to your community. The MPP program is more than an academic program and a certificate. It is a year long process in which we are challenged to think creatively, work collectively and center humanity in everything we do. It is a time in which we develop relationships with people from diverse backgrounds and learn from different realities. We gain knowledge and strengthen skills to work in fields that can have significant impact on people's well being and human rights, as well as on our environment. Yes, this is a huge responsibility, which we should not take lightly, but particularly now, it is an opportunity to really do things differently. COVID 19 has laid bare, has laid bare the multi layered social, economic, political, and environmental crises the globe is facing and consequentially, the systematic inequalities that these crises cause, particularly amongst the most marginalized communities, including women and youth, BIPOC and LGBTQI communities, and people with disabilities. We need to challenge ourselves to contribute to building a society that shifts away from profit over everything, and that supports collective care, equity, and solidarity for all people and our planet. For now, take time to celebrate acknowledge what you have achieved and take in the year you have just gone through. Look around you, see who accompanied you on this journey and be grateful for what you have done for each other. I just wanna finish saying again, congratulations and welcome to the MPP alumni community. Thank you. Thank you, Maite, for being with us and for such inspiring and honest words. The ceremony will continue with a message that was prepared by the staff of the MPP, wishing good luck to all of you. Dear students, you did it. Congratulations. What a year we had. You did a great job. Please stay healthy, stay strong. Goodbye and good luck. Dear students, at the end of this crazy year, I would like to say goodbye, good luck, stay safe and stay in touch. We would really, really like to know how you're doing. Dear MPP students, I do hope that life gives you everything you need to fulfill yourselves. I wish you all the best and I look forward to staying in touch. Congratulations everyone for a completed year of classes. We really enjoyed walking through it with you. All the best in the year to come. Dear students, I'm proud of all of you. Be the best version of yourself. Good luck and goodbye. Hi hi. Congratulations to you all and I wish you good luck with your future plans. Dear students, you did it. Congratulations. We won't forget you. Let's stay in touch.
Dear students, congratulations. Good luck and stay in touch. Oh well, during this year, um, the directorship didn't come in pairs solely. The, the chairing of this ceremony didn't come in pairs solely. We also have two keynote speakers. So many things are coming in pairs during this closing ceremony. And during this year, we have our study advisor, Bo Nunes, and a specialization coordination, coordinator of social entrepreneurship and public policy, Professor Shyama Ramani. Both have in common that they are team players, and we already heard a lot about this community cooperation in the previous speeches. And they believe in that value, in the value of cooperation. Bo has been a key actor during this year, as Demos has said. With her professionalism and honest care, she supported students in their study progress and much more. Shyama is a person of action and positive energy. Through her research and classes, she teaches us to be present and to have a concrete social goal when we work in policy. I will first give the floor to Bo, and Bo will hand over to Shyama. Dear NPP students, family and friends of our students and colleagues. The students already know me, but for those who, for those who don't, I'm Bo Nash, the study advisor for the NPP program. This academic year, I was and am here to give students advice when studying is a challenge. When students needed someone to listen to or needed a boost in their well-being. But let me start. To be successful in life doesn't mean only having a diploma. Although my first advice would be finish your thesis and graduate. <laughs> to be successful, you also need to take care of yourself. And if you want to become the best version of yourself, and if you want to be able to tap in your, your power, I want to give you some advice. Ask for help when needed. Family, friends, or colleagues cannot guess that you are in need of help. Reach out for a helping hand, because what if asking for help is giving the other person the opportunity to give? I will read a story that came past by on social media, and that sums it all up for you. It's a story from Daniel and Lisa, and Daniel wrote it. Lisa and I had to get on a flight unexpectedly this weekend to visit someone we love, and yesterday we flew home. As we took off and got up over Dallas, we were pinballing around in some terrible turbulence. The kind that wants to make you close your eyes, collapse into yourself, and get really, really quiet. The turbulence that turns even the staunchest atheist into a prayer warrior. In that moment, the teenager next to us, with whom we had not shared a word, turned and said very intensely, I need you to talk to me right now. He went on, I have a terrible anxiety, and this is my first time ever to fly alone. And this turbulence is messing with me, and I need to talk, I need you to talk to me right now. And so we started talking like, hi, I'm Lisa, and this is my husband, Daniel, and we're going to be your best friends for the next 90 minutes. He told us his name is Braden and told things about his life. But here's the most important thing, something that Braden can teach all of us. When you need help from people, take the risk and ask for it. I need you to talk to me right now. When life gets turbulent, we tend to close our eyes and collapse inwards and get really quiet. But no, that won't work. Braden shows us a better way. Look around, open up, put yourself out there and ask for help. Next to the tip of Daniel and Lisa, I would like you to provide you with some other tips. So the first one is ask for help when needed. And the second one is take good care of yourself. You need to be with you for the rest of your life. 
And if you were a car, you would fuel it when needed. You will take it to the garage for maintenance and you would give it a good rinse once in a while. Set up, oh, sorry. So fuel yourself with things that provide you with energy and maintain yourself mentally and physically. Trust your instincts and believe in yourself. Sometimes all of you, all you have to do is trust your gut and believe you can do it. Set a positive mindset at the start of each day. And if you do not know what your instinct is telling you, take a moment of quietness, meditate, listen to your inner voice. Enjoy every single moment and celebrate each day. Each day is unique. Find the time to celebrate each day. Also bad days are worth celebrating. So how would your party look today? Love yourself and be proud of yourself. This is difficult sometimes as a lot of people only see their flaws. Take a moment each day to look at the positive things that you did, the achievements that you made and acknowledge them. This can also be a small act like when you help, some, uh, when you help somebody crossing the street or that you set a target that you reached. And remember, you are beautiful the way you are. To finalize my speech, I want to close off with a picture. So I think that will say enough. <laughs> I would like to thank you for listening. I would want to wish you a wonderful life. Keep in touch, drop us a line once in a while. And I would now like to give the floor to Sayana. Thank you. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, but before that, I'd first like to thank Julieta for having invited me to give this keynote and to the MPP team for organizing this wonderful event. Now, let me start sharing the screen. Now, recent events have given credence to a buzzword used to describe certain markets, VUCA, standing for volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Indeed, this term has come to define our entire world these last 18 months. Who would have imagined that a virus infestation could implode as an endogenous shock in China and be carried to every part of the globe by travelers, hitting different parts of the world as an exogenous shock, causing the deaths of millions, inflicting both visible and invisible suffering, and finally making us change our very lifestyle. So before we go further, I request you to join me to observe a minute of silence for all those who have suffered personal losses and send our good wishes and vibrations to all those who are recovering or helping others to recover. Please join me. Thank you. One day this last year, 
uh, an MPP student of last year uh, sent me a text message. Prof, how are you? So I replied to him, I'm feeling lousy with a capital L. And so he sent me back this picture of himself with his friends and this quotation. I'm sure many of you have asked yourself like Frodo, why did it happen in my time? I hope all of you had somebody like Gandalf to say that this is not for you to decide. All we have to decide is what to do with the time given to us. And so I must congratulate you on having the right attitude and doing so well. Congratulations to all of us. We have had a delightful year together, replete with Zoom marathons of various kinds. So I am sure that we have built strong bonds which will surely last through time. And uh, therefore, congratulations. You are going to get a Master of Science in Public Policy and Human Development. You are now equipped to make a positive difference wherever you will be from tomorrow. Now, these two issues are of great importance and is the mandate of our institution. Let's take public policy. Now, during the first wave of the pandemic, especially, some leaders have been extraordinary in terms of their leadership styles to bring about a common vision and community engagement for observance of hygiene behavior. So, Surely, after a year of analyzing data, you can note the common characteristic of my sample set of leaders. <laughs> uh, so, on the other hand, some others have not done so well. Mistakes are always possible. And I take my country, which had handled its first wave very well. But in India, the leaders were overconfident and they lifted all restrictions in a premature fashion, allowing for elections and allowing for communal festivities with absolutely no regard for any kind of observance of hygiene behavior. Who paid the cost? Not the politicians, but the common people, especially the poor, who will be suffering and coping with their losses for many years to come. But can we, even in India, simply blame the politicians? No, we cannot. Because as Professor Rene Kemp, my friend, pointed out to me, a government doesn't govern in vacuum. Any mistakes it makes or any success is it enjoys is due to supporting powers, support given from various quarters of the economy. So I want all students to remember that you too have a role to play in our complex world, to make a difference and to shape it to your desire. And so, Thinking about building back and coming to human development, I have never attended so many international conferences as this year, the two for free and without leaving my home. So this was extraordinary. And uh, recently there was a debate on building back featuring six Nobel laureates, all of them economists. It was interesting that they were divided into two camps. The first camp, four of the economists seemed to feel that if only we could get resources to have better data collection, governance, if they and the policy makers could be equipped with executive powers, and if everyone could comply, 
then all problems could be solved or at least reduced. Then another camp of economists here, A.K. Sen and Angus Deaton pointed out to three realities. First, it is politics and politicians, not policy makers who rule. Secondly, it is difficult, if not impossible, to get complete and perfect data on any problem Third, it's difficult to make all people obey rules, just like our vaccine naysayers have proved. Now, what is interesting is that while these Nobel laureates were uh, discussing how exactly to engage, because these, these two Nobel laureates pointed out as the pathway human development through empowerment. And they felt that citizens must be empowered to talk with hierarchy and hierarchy must engage with the citizens. Therefore, co-design and cooperation are key to building back. Then while they were debating how exactly to do it, ordinary mo mortals, you know, were having a parallel conversation uh, in the chat box. And one of them wrote this, and I thought it was interesting that we must reduce inequalities. That's the main thing to do in, uh, in building back a better future. And a key is education. This should be playing center stage. I thought it was very nice till I showed it to our philosopher in residence. Some of you might be knowing him. He is Dr. Sardar. Turkeli, he pointed out to me that education is necessary but not sufficient because it has to make citizens reflexive, reflect on their duties and shortcomings, be critical about the values imposed on them and at the same time dynamic enough to act for positive change. While he spoke thanks to our digital transformed world uh, with Google, I immediately showed him a saying from a 19th century Indian philosopher about education. And really, I see that the purpose of education has not changed at all. Our challenge each decade, maybe each year also, as this year has proved, is to see how we can fit the delivery of education and the educational experience to fit the needs of the students and of society. Therefore, I'd like to conclude by saying that we have done the best we could. I am again echoing uh, Professor Bartel, our director. We have done the best. Now, to take another quote from Mahatma Gandhi, we hope that you will take this opportunity and apply this education to be the change that you want to see in the world. Perhaps a fluttering of your butterfly wings as you emerge from the cocoon of the MPP program will trigger a tsunami of positive change. So we wish you fair winds for your sails and happy adventures as you navigate through your next chapters of life. Thank you. Thank you, Shyama and Bo, for such beautiful words. Now we will continue with a video first of our study association demos. And if that's not ready, I will continue with the second element of the ceremony. Okay, so not ready. We will now continue with thanking the governance of the MPP. 
First, I would like to thank the Board of Examiners with Dr. Micaela Banore as chair and to the representatives, uh, the staff members who are represented in, that, in this body. I also want to thank the Education Program Committee with Dr. Mikhail Natorsky as chair, with the representation also of staff members and students. I want to thank the Alumni Committee, led by Abby Daly, with the representation of staff, students, and alumni, and the Study Association Demos. We will take the opportunity to thank the students representatives of the Education Program Committee and Demos, and hand over a certificate recognizing their contribution to the program. I will ask them uh, to come to the, to the stage. They will pick up the certificate and they will wave to the camera. I must say that these students put a lot of effort in making this cohort a community and in being in communication with you and sharing your experience with us. So for us, it has been a pleasure working with you. And we really appreciate the time and effort that you have put into communicating with the program and making this a better program. So I will name them and then Demos will come first, pick up the certificate and later the representatives of the Education Program Committee. Ashley Lewis, president of Demos and student representative in the Education Program Committee. Luis Johanna Van Heuten, vice president of Demos. Luis Hanna Verhoeven, treasurer of Demos. Later, the representatives of the Education Program Committee, Diana Adiomba Award, student representative in the Education Program Committee, and Vincent Martin Room, student representative in the Education Program Committee. Okay, congratulations to all of you and also my behalf, thank you very much for your effort, your contribution to be with us and work with us. Now what we are going to do, we will move to the different specializations which are part of our master program. Each specialization will be addressed by its coordinator. Now over the years, specializations have changed. Some were dropped, new ones were added. And this is exemplary also for the spirit of the master program MPT, where we aim to train students in subjects that are societally relevant. In this academic year, the students could choose among seven specializations ranging from topics in foreign policy and development to social protection. The specializations will now appear in alphabetical order. Thank you very much. I will ask the students who are at Pate and Lumiere, when the specializations are called, you can clap each other to each other, you can stand up if you want. And those who are at home share with us uh, this moment of congratulation to the students who have finished their courses. We will start with foreign policy and, and human development specialization coordinator, Dr. Hampton Q. Han. Yeah, Alessa, Alessandra, Bram, Emily, Hans, Kushbu, Leo, Mirek, Muhammad, Polina, Sabrina, Simon, uh, Fiesan, Peraya. This is a difficult year for all of us, but I'm grateful that this year we have such a wonderful group of dedicated students joining the Foreign Policy and Development Specialization. Without asking, Denise, Anselm and Fons also told me that they like this year's cohort a lot. And to me, this is the best foreign policy cohort that I have had in the past few years. Thanks for the energy and dedication you put during this month. I know that the, the legal aspect of the specializations created lots of uncertainty to use, but you tried it and you have achieved a lot. So believe in yourself and stay adventurous. I wish you all the best with your future adventure. Thank you. Thank you, Hamza. We will follow by recognizing the students who follow the specialization on governance of innovation, specialization coordinators, Professor Robin Cohen and Dr. Fabiana Vicentin. The students will be addressed by Robin Cohen.
dear students, <clears throat> it has uh, it's been a challenging but a, a fulfilling year. So on behalf of myself and particularly Fabiana, the other coordinator, we want to congratulate you. We also want to acknowledge the efforts of all of the teachers, Kirsten, Lily, Neil, Florencia, Rene, Michele, Serdar, another Rene, whom you've all met, at least most of them not face to face, but one way or another. We've all enjoyed teaching. I've spoken to all, the, all of the teachers involved and have said that this was a very good cohort, very cooperative, very enthusiastic. It has been a real pleasure working with you this year. Um, it's only the second time we've done this specialization. We made a few changes and I hope that the changes were fulfilling for you. In any case, congratulations on all of your hard work. It's worked out well from our point of view, I hope from your point of view as well. So we wish you all the very best in the future. Thank you, Robin. We will now follow by recognizing the students who follow the Specialization on Migration Studies Specialization Coordination, Coordinator Professor Melissa Siegel. Wow. Hello, students. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's great to see you, at least virtually. It's been uh, quite a year this year. Um, I'm sure it's, of course, not the year that you expected and maybe not the student experience you expected, but definitely one that I think you will always remember. I really appreciated your dedication, your hard work, and your understanding throughout the entire specialization, as I think you also understood that it was not only difficult for you, but also for the teachers, and we very much appreciated this. I know you're going to go on to do amazing and impactful things in the future, and I look forward to seeing that. Please do stay in touch, come back and visit us in Maastricht so we can see each other also more in person. I've really enjoyed getting to know you in class and with some of you in the migration walks, and finally also being able to meet in person at the very end. Again, I wish you all the best of luck and hope to see you again in the future. Take care. Thank you, Lisa. This is a very special closing ceremony. Not only people are joining, but also the mountains. So welcome to the mountains to the closing ceremony. It's nice seeing you. The ceremony will continue with the recognition to the students who follow regional integration and multi-level governance, specialization coordinators, Dr. Mikhail Natorsky and Dr. Tatiana Stikka. The cohort will be addressed by Tatiana. Hello, and a big congratulations to the Regional Integration Group. This has been an unusual year. We never really got to meet each other in class in person, but you have been an extraordinary group of people and made up for long distances and not always perfect internet connection with your incredible motivation, open-mindedness, and good humor. In these four months, we have tapped at a whole bunch of global policy challenges and multi-level policy solutions. Although many of the international borders were closed, we have virtually traveled to all inhabited continents to gain knowledge about regional development and change. And often it is your very local experiences that helped us jointly understand the complexity of the global. Thank you for sharing. On behalf of the core specialization team, Michal, Victor, Godway, Lalaine, and myself, I would like to wish you a bright future after MPP and success in your professional careers. We have great hopes for you finding solutions to the most wicked policy challenges and finding your way at all levels of governance. Thanks a lot, everyone. And once again, congratulations. Thank you, Tatiana. The recognition will follow with a specialization on risk and vulnerability, specialization coordinators, Professor Eleonora Nielsen and Dr. Valerie Grau. The students will be addressed by Valerie. Dear risk and vulnerability group, you have shown real passion and team spirit during the whole cold works. You mapped your way, you traveled around the globe with satellites, and sometimes you struggled a lot with software crashes and cloudy images, but we know there's radar data. You really managed any difficult task as team helped each other, and it was really a great experience teaching in this group, the best group I also ever had. I tend to say maps are powerful. Now you have the skills to identify what's behind a pretty picture and contribute to the right maps for decision. And on behalf of the whole team of lecturers and tutors of this specialization, we would like to wish you low risk and vulnerability, but high resilience and adaptation for the future. 
Congratulations on behalf of the whole risk and vulnerability team and a personal thank you for the opportunity to teach in this amazing atmosphere despite the truck struggles outside. Thank you. The recognition will continue with the specialization on social entrepreneurship and public policy, specialization coordinators, Professor Shama Ramani, Dr. Serda Tarko, and Dr. Nordin Esatki. The students will be addressed by Serda. Uh, dear, dear students, uh, I would like to congratulate you all uh, because of your hard work and dedication to the social entrepreneurship topic. I'm fully confident that you are very well equipped to introduce the change uh, to the policy ideas, interests, and the institutions that you will work in in very close future. On behalf of uh, Shia Maramani, Nordinet uh, Satki, and uh, Kirsten Haaland, our uh, tutors in the track, uh, I would like to uh, thank you all uh, for your uh, participation, uh, creativity, and uh, dedication to solve the uh, global challenges that affects uh, all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Serda. We will continue recognizing the students who follow the specialization on social protection policy, specialization coordinator, Dr. Francisca Gassman, who will address the group. Hello, my dear social protection students. We are so grateful that we could be at your side over the last four months and that we got to know you a little bit. We asked a lot from you, I know, and you delivered. You are ready to go into the world and apply what you have learned. But you did not only learn about social protection, no, you also learned a lot about yourself, your strength, but also your limitation. And this experience will stay with you always. And you will always be in our hearts as you are a very special cohort. So on behalf of Zina and the entire team, all the tutors, the other teachers, we are so proud of you, dear social protection student. Go and conquer and rock the world. Thanks, Francisca. We will now address uh, the group of students that follow the free elective track. The students that selected the free elective track decided for a combination of two different specializations. So most of this, the speeches also were given to you. They are the ones who followed a tailor-made recipe in view of their interest. And now we are going to hear from this year's students. All I can say is you and you and you and you, you and you and you and you. Should be at the you and you with you and you. But COVID ensured that we sit on Zoom All the awkward moments of the muted sounds With the camera off or just hanging around We united from every corner of the planet Trying to save the world or at least learn how to plan it Another email from Francisco with new COVID regulations I wanna go out, God I'm losing my patience Have I left my room at all because of lectures today? Curfew meant I couldn't go out anyway You and you and you and you You and you and you and you you and you and you and you. You and you. You and you. You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. In a hurricane, we got risk and vulnerability. Lost your company and that entrepreneurship, public policy. No money in your pockets, better call social protection. This specialization points you in the right direction. Multi level governance and region integration. You better pay attention, they're uniting every nation. Actually, migration has a bit of that too. Helping out on fellow men, that's what they all do. Scared of robots taking over? Go to innovation. They will stop the Terminator from taking every nation. That could cause some diplomatic issues too. For that, Foreign policy creates a truce. You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you.
You and you and you. You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. In the end, not everyone has been in math. We can take you through it. It will be a blast. Whether at the market on a Wednesday afternoon or hiking on St. Peter under the sun or the moon. We hope to see you all in the city center someday for us to have fun and drink our stress away. After all, we should be at the U and U with you and you and you and you. Whether we have met online or in person, the fact that we're all leaving makes our hearts be hurting. Thank you for this year, amazing MPP. Now one more time on the count of three. You and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. You and you and you. You and 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 you and you and you. Thanks. That was fun. All right. There are so many things I would like to express to this cohort and the staff and instructors that made this academic year possible. I am proud and grateful for the community that together we have built and nurtured. I am amazed and inspired by our diversity and how all together we built a powerful puzzle that is able to produce positive social changes. I am full of emotions by all the feelings we experienced this academic year and touched by your positive energy. And I think that the video that we just played is a good example of that. I am grateful that we allowed education to unite us in our search to be a better version of ourselves and to find the role in society that we want to undertake. We are all responsible to contribute to the well-being of our society and our planet who hold us. And it is by cooperation with each other that we can achieve change. Therefore, my message and wish for all of us is that we embrace the concept of cooperation by strengthening the uniqueness elements that define ourselves and that we use those unique elements to contribute to building societal good. I would like to close this ceremony with a joint clap. I will ask those at home, those at the movie theater, those here in this building, those uh, wherever you are, to put your hands together and to clap as hard as you can. I want to dedicate this clap to education, the element or right that united us, to the internet and technology, the tool that made this year possible to the instructors and staff for your commitment and compromise, to our loved ones for your love, support, and care, and to you, our dear students, for being with us this year and for your future. Let it be bright, joy joyful, and meaningful. Please join me in clapping for this and for all other elements that you would like to include. for joining the closing ceremony of the Master of Science in Public Policy and Human Development. With this club and closing, I invite you to watch a video prepared by the Communication Office reflecting the life of the students from this cohort during the academic year. I thank you again for joining us and I wish you a good evening and success with your thesis. <laughs> DEMOS is the independent study association of our master's program at Maastricht University and the United Nations University in Maastricht. Who we stand for are all the students who are part of the MPP program. The DEMOS is really, it's free and it's for everyone. We try to create a community. We make the hoodies. We're also making the yearbook with photos from the whole year. 
one that we have done is the Halloween pub quiz, which went amazing. I think this year in general, you kind of got from it what you were willing to throw at it. There hasn't been a time where we've wanted to do something and we haven't been able to do anything. King's Day will get creative and we'll make sure that everyone's in pairs. Instead of a Geneva trip, we'll have like activities and instead of you know, for Carnival, we'll do have an online event. We did reach like a sense of community, even though not everyone is here. Even if we couldn't all be together all the time, I do believe that these are like friends that I'll carry with me for my entire life. I think the like the employability track and the mental tracks were big draws for me. They consider the next step beyond like your education. I really wanted to catch up on statistics and econometrics and this is the perfect program. It's just I really wanted to make sure that I also understood why certain policies are implemented. Really understanding what poverty and inequality means, where it happens and how we can tackle it. And obviously the UN affiliation looks really nice on the CV. The specializations are also super interesting and they really prepare you to work in a specific field even though it's not excluding other options. And I was like, oh, social entrepreneurship is actually like my my passion. Combining this with public policy, this was, this was like mind blowing for me. It's just been really cool to like kind of see everyone so politically engaged or like so committed to social issues. And you see students doing psychology, medical students doing nursing, you're like, whoa, what? It's an ecosystem of co-creating to make better policies for the world, which is pretty cool. I really like it here. It's it's a little bit of a romantic city, I guess. It's like a village. You know everyone. But you get to interact with the city. You get to interact with the people around the city. A big draw for me is that it really is like the heart of Europe. And so I was quite looking forward to like being centered in Maastricht and being like, you know, having the opportunity to explore around it. What I really hope for everyone in this cohort is that everyone reaches a, a point or like a position where they make a difference in the way they want. I think this year really brought out a lot of perseverance, which is a great characteristic to have for everyone. And it's a characteristic that will get you far. And I think if people kind of apply the same dedication, they're going to get so far. I really do believe that this cohort is capable of doing great things because it hasn't always been easy, but it's been, it's been really good. It's been a good year. And also keep on spreading enthusiasm. <laughs> Sprinkle happiness. <laughs>